Rachel, let's start with you because you were raised by two gay moms. What did you think of the study? I found it very interesting and I definitely agreed with the preliminary findings. I think that as a child who had two moms, I faced a lot of adversity in public. We faced a lot of social and fiscal um, trials and tribulations that you know, heterosexual headed families might not have. I mean, of course, every family has their challenges, but ours definitely had added ones. And that brought us a lot closer together. It opened dialogue for my parents to be much more honest and straightforward with me about things in the world that might not have ever come up in discussions with my dad and my stepmom. So. And that, that's exactly what the study suggests, actually, that it was about this open dialogue that encouraged kids to open up at a younger age. I actually want to play a comment. This came in from Carrie about her own situation. Let's take a listen. Sex family in Alabama. My partner and I, we have a seven-year-old son together, and we find this study incredibly encouraging uh, because, you know, for us, creating a family was something we started planning years in advance. And I think that coupled with the fact that we do face opposition every day here in the South, that you this study is only showing what we already know, that our children are thriving, they are supported, and we are capable of providing loving, stable homes for our children. I mean, is there still a lot of opposition that, that gay couples face? Absolutely, and I think um, where you live influences what kind of uh, opposition you hit. It's, um, um, it's still well and alive, homophobia is still out there, and if... Um, if you live where I live, Northampton, Massachusetts, um, probably not. You can uh, be safe to send your kid to school and not worry too much about what other parents are saying about you behind your back because there are so many of us here. But I feel for your last speaker there um, in Alabama, I don't think that there is the same kind of um, understanding and openness to our family. So yes, we're, the fight's not over. We're still out there trying to um, show everyone that we are part of the norm. This study confirms what we've known for 30 plus years already. I mean, there are 30 plus years of research uh, in the U.S. Um, studying same-sex headed households um, and outcomes, as we know, for children are just as good, if not better in some cases, um, than those for children who are raised by opposite sex couples. And, you know, the questions vary. They, they are, they, they surveyed over 500 children for this particular study, and they asked them general questions about their family and home life, how they interact with their parents, how often they interact with their parents, and get the child's perception of what their home life is like. Um, I believe they also talk to parents in these cases. Um, and in most of the studies um, in the United States, or at least a good handful of them, they do survey the parents and the parents' own perceptions of how their families function. But in this study, I think it's particularly um, it's a, of particular note that they actually talk to the children. Um, and they ask the children to give them their, their perceptions of kind of how they view their families. Um, so I think that when you're measuring the general health and welfare of a family and family cohesion to get that perspective from a child, uh, one that's under 17, um, I think this particular study ranges from um, kids who are 5 to 17, um, to get that feedback from a child to kind of extrapolate that their family has excellent communication and that they're open and honest and they can talk about everything, I think that's pretty, pretty notable.